<laughs> oh my god oh my god that was so wild thank god for technical support and <laughs> to those of you who have been waiting for us i'm so sorry we're starting late that was just a total techno fail uh getting zoom and uh facebook linked up together but phew. okay so uh, I'm Bonita, and I am here with Carlos the Medium, who is like one of my favorite people. Um, and Carlos, get ready to blush because I'm going to gush. <laughs> so, hi everyone. Carlos is um, like a really, really good person and a really, really good evidential medium, intuitive medium, soul connector, you know, Carlos has the ability to pretty much be open, uh, just like me, only in his own style, his own way. Um, and he and I've started working together a bit. We've, we've known each other on and off for a number of years. And um, I just want to say, uh, one of the things that I hope we will um, touch on is the paths that each of us take as we're developing our skills and growing as intuitive people. Because Carlos has had a diverse path. In fact, you've had the whole terrain. You know, your path is not just straightforward. You're like exploring everything this way, exploring everything that way, then move forward all around backwards a little bit um and i i personally find that to be especially inspirational about you there's so many people who um we put ourselves out there like i know i did when i was learning a lot of new things i would go on my meetup group and say i just took a program in this i have no idea what i'm doing but come on over we'll do a workshop together and we'll explore together yeah, there's a lot of us that just, as soon as we learn, we run forward like excited children. And Carlos, you went kind of the opposite route. You learned and then you learned some more and you shared your work and you learned some more and you learned a lot more and then you shared a little work and then you learned a lot more. By the time you went forward and promoted yourself as a professional uh, psychic, you were way more advanced than most people would have been even after years of having been professional. So uh, now that we have a nice little group of us starting, um, I will stop talking and hand this over to Carlos, the awesome medium. Thank you, Bonita, for having me and thank you for everybody tuning in. Um, yes, it's been quite a odyssey. I will say that, uh, that's the right word for it. Uh, it's been a very much spiritual journey and you're right. I, uh, it took many years to kind of cultivate uh, my technique and my mediumistic abilities. Uh, I didn't dive right through. Uh, some people know, a lot of people don't know. I was, uh, I was still working for the federal government at the time uh, until last year. And so basically I was uh, undercover basically just doing the mediumship on the side, just with a cloak. And I didn't put myself out there too much. I didn't promote. And I just did referrals, you know, word of mouth for readings. And uh, yes, it, it, I, I got to, I have had the pleasure and uh, honor of training various uh, uh, world-class mediums in, in the profession. And I soaked up as much knowledge as I could and uh, wisdom and training from them and techniques. And I was able to kind of like, you know, uh, pick, what best suited me for my style, and, and I went forth with it. So it's uh, it's been many years of training. Um, uh, it it took me let's see about nine years of going at mock speed to finally like have the uh, the courage to leave my uh, federal career. And but I did it. I have no regrets. I don't look back. Um, I'm just looking forward. Um, and it's been, uh, it's been a pleasure. I mean, um, to be honest with you, it's, it's a very long journey. It's slow. It's not something that's overnight. 
I've had my ups and downs along the journey. Um, it's not, it's nothing that's just, you know, doesn't come, just doesn't come to you overnight. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a very slow, slow, slow process. But what you gain from that is confidence. You gain, um, you know, notoriety. You, you gain, uh, you know, it, it also makes you humble. You know what I mean? Because you, you have to earn it. This is not something that was just handed to me overnight. So, and as time goes by, like any statistical curve, there's that learning curve of improvement. So, um, you know, that, there's something to gain from that. So I'm very grateful to be here. And uh, thanks for having me again, but even everybody watching. So. Well, thank you. So Carlos, tell us a little bit about um, what you do now. And also um, maybe some of the things that you've done in the past that have evolved to where you are in the here and now. Okay, so now uh, I consider myself a professional evidential medium. I'm also psychic. Um, I don't promote myself as a psychic, but I am a psychic medium um, because it, it, those energies all encompass the, how I tune into my antenna. My antenna tunes into spirit and people's energies. Um, but how did I get here? Honestly, I was just telling you before we went live. Um, I when I started out, and not I don't want to go over like how I discovered I was a medium. That's a long story. But um, when I started out, I started out with like basic stuff, like uh, Indian cards, so Native American cards, I mean, and medicine cards. And I would just go to psychic fairs, like at my church at Arlington, in a physical chapel, and I would just read for people. And they were like the the psychic fairs. Was, uh, I think I, I did for free. I charge whatever. And um, what I did was I just lay, lay down cards. And I didn't know what the cards meant. And my mentor would say to me, just lay them down and, you know, let the cards talk to you. And I said, huh? But they have meaning. So, you know, just let the cards talk to you. Trust me, they'll just talk to you. And I said, okay. So I lay down a few cards. And then little by little, by little as time went by, I would start getting information about that person or about that person's life and then slowly 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 next thing you know the next step came where i wasn't using cards anymore i was maybe just uh just tuning into the person just with a paper and pad and i would get things about their life but then maybe a loved one would check in or something like that and it was just very basic it was just be like there's a dad here um kind of feels like he's uh you know happy to see you and he, he's kind of round and short does that make sense the person like, yeah my dad was round and short okay and then it just evolved and evolved and evolved. And, and that's over the years after, you know, years of training and practice, 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 and falling on my face over and over and over, little things came, came to be like, I would, before you know it, I was like, okay, um, do you know this person? I hear the name uh, Russell. Or something. Like, yes, that's my brother who's in spirit. Thank you. And then like, uh, before you know it, that same energy with Russell would show me how he passed, or I would get something that was very, evidential specifically to that person such as like uh russell showing me like you have his like baseball uh his you know his baseball and his autograph they'd be like yes that's something that we hold very valuable in our home you know he left behind he was a baseball player and uh he had several baseballs and we kept one as you know something to honor him so just little things like that just like came to be um but it took time and what i think really would uh to make to make things uh, uh easy to understand is it's, it's a process and it's baby steps. It's, this is not something that's just comes to you overnight. Um, you know what I mean? So that's, that's how spirit kind of, they dangled the carrot. I went for the carrot and then they started feeding me little bits and pieces to now where I just, I mean, I'm not gonna say every reading is a home run or I mean a grand slam these days because you know, it's not that easy, but before you know it, you know, like there can be 10 people that are here that are all chatting with me at the same time uh in my ears i'm feeling them, i'm seeing them like you know i know things from them and it's just it's it's a big it, it, it's a grand orchestration of energies and you just got to know how to kind of connect with who's who and then just deliver the message mm -hmm. um so you mentioned first of all that is so awesome and i want to add the one time you and i did kind of work together uh a few years ago and I got to sit in the circle as you were sharing messages with everyone in the circle. Um, and you brought through my grandparents and my uncle, like just perfectly. It was really amazing. And you shared just a couple of innocuous sentences that brought me and my family when I came home and 
shared the experience with them, a great deal of relief. Mm -hmm. Things that there's no way you would have thought of these comments as anything other than passing along a message. But for us, it helped release concern, distress that we've been carrying for a long time. So you, you really do pick up on, on these like subtle frequencies. I was just wondering, um, what is it like for you when the messages are coming through or the people are coming forward? What are your senses? What are, you know, um, what are you seeing or hearing? Like, do you actually hear someone speaking or does it appear in your mind? Like, what level of trust do you need to have for all of this? Share with us a little of your experience. Oh, of course. Um, it's it's all very subtle information. Um, it's subtle thoughts, impressions, uh, sensations. Um, a lot will come through feeling um, because one thing a lot of people uh, misunderstand is that with mediums, uh, spirit's going to use the the path of least resistance. In other words. They're going to go to the easiest route to convey the information. A lot of it's through sensations and feelings. What are you picking up? So a lot of it, I'll pick up how I feel with the energy. And then they'll gradually give me more information. But to kind of more directly answer your question, um, I'm seeing everything. I'm hearing, I'm seeing, I'm feeling. When I'm seeing, I'm seeing little daydream thoughts kind of like floating up in the air. And I'm just just going with what those thoughts are. Like I made, like, yes, what was it? Uh, today's, uh, today's Wednesday. Uh, Monday, I did an event uh, out of Columbia, Maryland, um, online on Zoom, and I remember just seeing a farmer right away, uh, like, a, a, I think that painting where they have the pitchfork, the grandfather and the grandmother mm -hmm. in front of a barn, I saw that image, and I said, by the way, there's, there's a farmer, a farmers that are here, loved ones, I didn't get a name, so I just went with the, the farmer energy, and then I'm seeing law enforcement energy with them. So there's something to do with loved one. There's a loved one that has a law enforcement a cop, someone in uniform, blue uniform or something. There's a detective or something. And she said, no, I don't understand the cop thing. Or, and I said, OK, there's someone here with a badge. And I'm telling you, there's something with the law enforcement. She goes, ah, oh, my dad was Secret Service for a little bit. I said, that's, uh -huh. that's law enforcement. And I said, then heart. She goes, yeah, my dad died from the heart. I said, well, that's his energy. He, he's here. He wants to check in. He wants to say hello. So you know what I mean? So it, it just comes very subtle. But you have to, it's it's like a quick flash in your mind. Um, mm -hmm. It's like you close your eyes for a second, you see something for a second, and you just got to go with it. It's sometimes it's a split second quick. And then when you're hearing them, it's just little words in your head, to be honest with you. You don't actually hear them physically, like you and I are having a conversation. Um, it's the audible is very, it's just quiet chatter in your head. And like, I'll, I'll, I'll have like, when I'm working, I'll have a conversation with them and I'll be like, uh, what do you suggest we, you know, how do we answer this question that this, the client's asking me? And then they'll just start talking. Um, mm -hmm. Because remember, they can convey a lot more with words than they, than they could, you know, have to show me like 10, you know, 100 images to convey with, with one sentence. You don't need to kind of um, put it together. And, but it's really, you're just bombarded with energy. And that's why, and it's, it's not only that, it's also dealing with, when you're working in a, in a group, or a uh, or a gallery type setting, you're also dealing with other energies that are there with other people, so it's it can be very difficult. And sometimes it's 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 not uh, as easy. It's not as easy as it looks, to be honest with you. <laughs> it it is not easy. It doesn't look easy. <laughs> so Carlos, um, you're talking about all of this very subtle information that you're treating with the um with the respect of solid 3d information mm -hmm. you know it sounds like you're treating these little flashes with as much embracement as you're treating the words i'm saying to you right now right yes yes i mean um it's a lot of there's a lot of information that comes through um, it's tangible, but it's intangible at the same time. It's it's hard to describe. Mm -hmm. um, I I can say this with all confidence um, that there's been plenty of times when I've gotten a, a vision of something, a quick flash, and I thought it was just my mind making something up. And mm -hmm. before you know it, the person beat me to it, and they're like, "Oh yeah, um, my my husband, you're talking about died in plane." And I see a plane in my head just go, just kind of fly by my 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 orc 
my, my third eye here just flies by a little plain, little plain. And then I'm just like, oh, I miss that. I miss that. <laughs> um, but yeah. it's, it's, it's interesting because um, sometimes it, it, the, the information just is super clear. Um, and it kind of even surprises me at times where I'm like, I pinch myself, like, did I just really connect with that energy that clearly? Um, you know, like a love, like we'll be talking with a client and like, yeah, your, your aunt's here. Da, da, da. Yeah, that, yeah, that sounds like my aunt. And then the person would be like, her name was, and I'll just be like, Ellen. Would be like, how'd you know that? I'm just, it just it came out of my mouth. I don't know. I, I can't explain it. You know what I mean? It's just, so. Yeah. Now, you call yourself an evidential medium. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, as we're learning our crafts, we have self doubt or information comes and we push it aside, thinking it's irrelevant. Right. We're waiting for the good stuff to come in. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, explain your uh, line, your line between evidential and self-doubt or dismissive? Like, how do you balance the two? Well, the evidential comes really with, it, 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 it's years and years of practice. It's a mastery mm -hmm. of, of your craft. Um, the evidential is validating spirit through evidence that that soul has moved on and is currently vibrating in the spirit world is an omnipresent with us in this current space. Um, how do I deal with, you know, doubt or lack of confidence or, you know, uh, not trusting my connections? It just takes time and practice. Um, it's, it's something that you never fully get to where you get you never fully are there 100 percent confident i'll be honest with you there's even the, at the best of times i'm not 100 percent. i'm probably roughly probably in the depending on how i feel that day or i'm probably batting about 85 to 97 percent confidence in, as far as how i feel um but i just go with it um one of the things i just one of the things i do is i practice and this is something i learned from um, a fellow medium friend of mine uh many years ago when i first started out was you 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 go with what you receive, no matter how fo foolish or how dumb or how much you fall on your face. You just deliver the message or the connection. A lot of times, people are going to be like, "I don't know, I don't know, it doesn't make sense." You just go with it, and even if like they don't they don't understand, it's okay because that energy is here. You deliver it because nine times out of ten, eight times out of ten, you're going to start building that confidence where you recognize those subtle energies. And that's when you start delivering evidence. That's where you start getting a name. That's where you start getting, oh, that's how the person passed. You know what I mean? How you make that connection. It just takes time. And that's, I think ev the evidence is stressed because you want to validate to the person how that person passed, but also to, pr pr to provide the message from that spirit to that direct, from that loved one that's your client at the moment, that the spirit has lived on and that so you can provide them closure and healing. And, and that's, that's the goal of it. Just, I think one of the keys is just don't get into your ego because your ego is going to tell you that you can't do this. Your ego is going to tell you that this is impossible, that you can't connect with spirit or what, or that this, that this information that's coming through, um, is, is basically just, you know, something your mind's making up or, or, or so. And that's, what's very hard to distinguish. I think probably one of the hardest things as a medium and a lot of mediums can agree with me is trusting the information you are receiving and relaying in it, um, and, and and not being not being afraid to look foolish or or even say that oh I, I must uh, you know because we're not 100 percent like you know uh, not to say 100 percent accurate but we don't always bat we don't always bat like you know a perfect you know 500 right. you know what I mean there's times where you know we misconnect or whatever and we just got to keep we slip, we get back up, we keep going, keep going, keep going. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I am always in awe of you, evidential mediums, because I, I'm channeling divine messages and people open up easier, I think, for messages from angels or light beings or, you know, ascended masters than they do. Like, I, I feel like you guys get much more demanding like demand for intimate details i can say oh i see an amorphous pink energy this is your 
you know, a friend of yours from whatever, whatever. But for you, you need to get like the color of the clothing right, the way overalls would hang, or the, like the details to you guys is impeccable for mm -hmm. people to have faith in what you're sharing. Um, do you have any like experiences about that, or you know, any sort of uh, beliefs you've you've developed with how to manage that? Yeah, I mean, it uh, go, goes back to what I said earlier, practice, 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 makes perfect. Um, you're never going to be perfect in this work, uh, just just mm -hmm. not to burst anybody's egos, but that's how it is. Um, but, you know, um, as far as the, you know, being able to uh, be pinpoint with your evidence at times, it, it's just something that you have to trust and you have to be just know that you're going down the right path with the link that you're getting. Um, and uh, you know, as one thing that's very um, important for developing mediums and intuitives and psychics, um, create a type of like language with your your guides, um, establish some type of, you know, uh, framework. That way you know that if you see a symbol for, for example, if I told someone, what does a black ribbon mean? Uh, most people would be like, I don't know what a black ribbon means. It, it, it's actually a ribbon for uh, melanoma. It's actually skin cancer. Mm -hmm. um, so if I see black ribbon, that means a loved one died from uh, skin cancer. Um, if I were to see, um, let's just see, I'm trying to think of things that I would come up in my head. Um, if I were to see, uh, da, 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 okay, baby blue ribbon, that's prostate cancer. Uh, for, so if I were to see, uh, uh, let's see, leukemia, I believe is a purple ribbon. If I were to see the number 7600, that means an aircraft had an emergency. That means they probably someone probably died in an airplane. So it's a code that in aviation language. So if you, the more things you have in your in your arsenal, the better. If you know what a, what a, for example, a liver looks like, you probably know that person was a heavy drinker or they probably had uh, problems with their liver, cirrhosis or, or hepatitis or something, things like that. Um, you know, you, you kind of learn what the language is like or you develop the language. And then before you know it, they start feeding you little bits and pieces. Um, it's not as easy as it sounds. It doesn't come through super clearly, but little bits and pieces come through with how you feel, how, what you're hearing, what you're seeing. And you just put it all together. You put this big picture together and you just deliver the message uh, and you just go from there. Um, yeah. So it sounds like you're making like a, a, um, a, a short cut language there that opens the door for them to send in more information? Or do you end up, do you just have sh like shorthand? That's what I meant. Like, yeah. or is the shorthand it? Like you see a liver, therefore you're like, well, I think there's someone who died of, of liver failure, possibly from drinking. Would that be all you would get? Or would it open a door for more information to come through once you acknowledge it? Both. Um, sometimes a person just comes through, says liver. And then I got, and then from there, um, I have to see male, female, age, range, uh, you know, then I have to see, um, you know, uh, father, mother, sister, brother, it, you know, I, they, what they do is basically go back to the path of least resistance. Um, they give you one piece of information and then you kind of unveil that, uh, unlayer that onion, if you will. And you start getting more and more information um, because, it, you know, it's very easy for them to, it, it would be so easy if they just showed us an image in our third eye that said mother um helen <laughs> died pneumonia 1976 say that carlos okay helen 1976 <laughs> pneumonia that would be very easy and it'd be like mother okay next person next slide it doesn't work that way because you're dealing with energy what people don't understand is that it's a, a spirits vibrating at a higher frequency so you have to raise your vibration as the medium that's why you're it says medium um, raise that vibration, your chakras are turned on, that energy starts circulating and vibrating and your antenna turns itself on and it connects with a higher frequency. In other words, your metabolic rate increases, your body temperature increases, the, your, your organic chemistry increases within your body and it connects with that frequency. And then, but that frequency is vibrating at such a high frequency that only so much information will come through because you and I are vibrating on the same frequency and so is the people here on Facebook we can have a regular day conversation, but they're on a different field. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why only little bits and pieces come through. I mean, yes, names will come through, numbers will come through, 
uh, the relationship will come through, how they pass will come through, but it comes in bits and pieces. And you just gotta kind of orchestrate, kind of orchestrate that big picture and put it all together. But the, what you get from one connection, more things will follow as well and others will come through as well. So you gotta just trust that energy and go from there. That's fantastic. I love the way you express that. Um, so as you are raising your frequency to connect with their frequency, to communicate with them while holding your frequency also here to communicate with your clients. Mm -hmm. So you're expanding your frequency and holding self in all places. Right. Yeah. So I just want to add for my people, this is why every Saturday I do a free live stream on building your energy centers. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so feel welcome to join me any Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, because we're working our energy centers just so we can hold on to our uh, intellectual and awareness integrity while connecting with really cool energy frequencies like Carlos does. Um, so before we go any further, Carlos, can you tell us a little bit about how during coronavirus time, you are uh, running your business, what work you're doing, what you have to offer, how you connect with you know, students, clients? So right now doing a lot of stuff through Zoom. So a lot of video teleconferences for clients, doing readings that way doing stuff on the phone. Uh, I'm not doing any in-person. Uh, I've had requests to do so and I'm, I will not. Um, but what I'm doing right now is, uh, and I can put this out later. So there's, a, we're, I have a promotion right now that I'm working with a promoter where we're doing um, basically a festival and expo style readings. So 40 minutes, I'm sorry, $40 for 15 minute readings. And then also the $80 or so for uh, 30 minutes. So in other words, instead of paying for the full uh, 30 minute rate of $100 that I typically charged, uh, I'm offering the discounted rate of the fair readings of $40 for 15 minutes, and then like $80 for a 30 minute reading. That's just something to kind of like give back to the community as well. And it's it's been a success. I've been, and I've been also doing, as you know, a lot of uh, Zoom stuff with you and Uma and Rob as well. We're doing uh, different uh, summits on different subjects and stuff like that and just doing a lot of different things and um, teaching a little bit as well to uh, you know various students out there um, and I can talk about that mentorship a little bit later in the end about the link and everything uh, and how to, you can uh, learn from me but or other teachers as well so yeah so just but doing a lot of stuff just I, ironically enough like uh, you would think that you'd be slow in this type this time of this time of the, of the world, but I'm still pretty steady for the most part. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and and I do want to mention uh, because I've seen you read for people in 15 minutes, you bring through a lot of information. Mm -hmm. You're you, I think, because of your many years of of um, studies and practice you're able to jump right in. You don't need to build the energy and take a lot of time. So your 15 minutes, it's a super packed, compressed 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, um, mm -hmm. yeah uh, can you talk to us a little bit about your studies? Like you have studied with global great teachers tell us a little bit and like maybe what what it's like studying with the different teachers because you've studied with big names that some people would have heard about right um john holland uh, reed brown uh umc you know big heavyweights like justin terry um uh, mike perry um yes i mean the it's it's you always Every medium is different, right? We all work a little differently because we're all unique, you know, in this world. No, not everybody looks the same in, in, when you leave your door, your, your door, you know, or in your house. So unless you're identical twins, the, the energy is still different. But uh, so you just take what you can from each medium that you learn. And that's what I did uh, under the UMC umbrella with Mike, Justin and Reed. We all work very similarly because we kind of are a... Uh, 
a blend or a bridge between psychic and mediumship. And we use a lot of numbers and we also use voice. Like it's a beautiful day to raise that vibration. These little, little things that we, we, I've cultivated from learning from them has been very effective in my mediumship. Um, and also just, uh, taking a workshop with uh, John Holland, who's internationally known. Um, he taught me a lot of like things about how to connect with that energy and maintain that link, even when uh, it can be, you know, a little difficult at times with the client or the energy setting of the ambiance, et cetera. He taught me a lot about how to move on the platform and kind of keep engaged with that energy because it's all about energy. And that, you know, that's something with these various teachers, it's like, you, you don't want to be like them, but you want to take what you can and, and bring it to what you do and formulate it to serve you best and serve the clients as well. Um, just, I, I think it's, it's something that you should never strive to learn in this field because the learning will never cease. The learning will always continue forever. It's a perpetual energy. Um, so, you, and I'm constantly learning. Even after readings, I'm just like, I missed that connection and I knew I had it. I had that name earlier and I just forgot to mention or I got distracted or I wasn't confident at that moment, you know, but it, that energy's there and I just get it. And, it and it gets to me afterwards, afterwards, I'm just like, you know, shame on you, shame on you, shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> but even, even, even the best of the best of the mediums, they're the same way. They're the same way. Um, but it, it's, it's, I think I just, I took a little bit of everything, a little bit of uh, something from everyone and uh, I used it, you know what I mean, to my best. And I, I encourage many students that uh, will train under me and other uh, mediums that you, you do the same thing. Do what works for you best and see what works for me. And maybe you can apply that for yourself as well. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll do great things with it. That's great. Um, so, Let's see, I do want to mention this Sunday, you yes. and I and mm -hmm. Uman Rob of Lotus Wellness are doing a free uh, live stream onto all of our Facebook pages. Right. Uh, now that we got the Zoom glitch worked out, <laughs> um, we're doing this Mother's Day, 12 noon to 2.30 in the afternoon, Eastern time on self-care. Uh, raising your vibration for self-care mm -hmm. and this we wanted to do on mother's day because we encourage you all to maybe contact your mothers your sisters your friends and celebrate this very special frequency of self-care on a day that normally we're physically together now we can be spiritually together uh, carlos do you i don't remember i'm i'm doing a DNA repair, repairing your genes, your genetic structure. What, what, what are you talking about? Do you remember? So this Sunday, yeah, I, oh, I do. Yeah, this Sunday for the summit uh, that starts at noon. Um, and you can find that on my Facebook page. I just posted it. Um, and I have it on my story as well. If anybody's not friends with me, they can just add me, Carlos Medium, just, uh, just Carlos Medium. But um, yeah, I'm doing mine on basically, it's on receiving. So uh, giving and receiving, it's a two-way street and that leads to balance and harmony. Um, and basically self-care, we often think about, you know, taking care of ourselves, but, and a lot of times we as spiritual beings, we wanna give and give and give and serve, serve, serve. But sometimes we forget the element of the other equation of service to ourselves. and and that's that, that's enabled through receiving. We have to receive as well as much as we give. So that we're going to cover that a lot. Uh, and that's something that you know comes to play with our energy work. Um, we give our energy, but we also have to balance that equation so we receive that energy back, whether it's through compensation or some other means as well. So yeah. Yeah. So I I hope you all can join us this Sunday, twelve noon Eastern time on. Carlos's Facebook page, my Facebook page, Uma's Facebook page, and Rob Pritchett's Facebook page. Uh, that will be a free live stream. And I think we will be sharing some really valuable information on that one. Um, 
but we're here now. If any of you have questions for either Carlos or me or for the general, please feel welcome to type them in the comments. We are happy to answer quick, quick questions. <laughs> Not um, don't ask us the ones that will take a half hour to answer. But if you have any quick questions, that would be awesome. And thank you, Carlos, just, for putting the link. Yeah, that's the link for this Sunday at noon, and it's free. It's mm -hmm. it, all you need is a Zoom. Uh, you don't even need a Zoom account. Just use the app or whatever, and um, you don't even have to go. You don't have to put your live video on. Just you can just hear in the background. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if people can join us on on Zoom, or I think Zoom or Facebook, your preference. But um, either way, it'll be fun. Um, so, Carlos, you mentioned a few times as we were planning this that you do numerology. I do. But every time I ask, say, Carlos, you use a pendulum. Oh, ball. Oh, look at that. My crystal ball is like literally. <laughs> I love that. Um, and you're like, no, 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 no. Just connect directly with spirit. But you do numerology. So, what is about numerology? First of all, I don't even understand numerology. So, immediately, right. I think you're a super smart guy. But tell us, like, how numerology calls to you, and um, and what is it? <laughs> so, numerology basically it's the occult uh, science of numbers. Um, and numbers talk to you. It's the it's it's one of the frequencies of communication of the universe. So if you look at numbers, um, if like a, a very advanced extraterrestrial civilization were to uh, communicate with us, it wouldn't be, it, it would be through numbers. It, it, it would be through numbers. It would be through math or some form or another, you know what I mean? So, but numbers, they have this frequency and they resonate. And so like, for example, like if I know something with your birthday, I can, Kind of figure out what's going on in your current life right now because just the numbers are basically the the numbers are alive and there's a, they they're emitting a frequency from the universe uh, of what's going on in your life so i don't want to get you know too personal but like if you don't mind what is your birthday i do not need the year just the month and day that's month okay day. uh april 19th so month four, four, day yep, four, nine yep four one nine two, you're, you're Aries, right? Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Headstrong. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> okay. So 4-9, you said, right? Well, 4-19 or 4-9? Four 4-1-9. Four That's right, 4-1-9. So uh, we'll just kind of add them up. So 4 plus 1 becomes 5. Plus five plus nine becomes fourteen. Uh, that becomes a five. Um, and then I know that the universe is at uh, 2020. So in this current moment, is it 2020? So that becomes two plus zero plus two plus zero is four. So your birthday is at a five energy uh, plus the universe is at a four. I add that up, that becomes nine. I know that you've had a birthday. So your birthday, yeah, it was last month. So I know that you're in nine energy. So, okay. So <laughs> let's just kind of see, let's just see what's here. And I, I want to tune in. So just say your first name and say it's a beautiful day. Bonita. Bonita, it's a beautiful day. Yeah, I, I can feel that energy. So nine, uh, typically nine is a closing energy, is letting go of old things. But with you, uh, you're in a very much a transitory state in your life. Um, let's ignore COVID. Just, let's just remove COVID out of the way. Um, this is a year where you're going to basically, uh, you're going to shed your skin mm -hmm. and transmutate into a different platform. Um, just spirituality, that's how this energy is, but it's also coming from a career standpoint where you can expect probably as we go into next year that you're going to attract a, a, a broader and a more larger audience because that's kind of where things are heading. Um, in, in the mind, that's where things are heading as well, but that's where physically things were going as well. Um, but you're also, this is a year to kind of like also heal from things from the past as well. 
because you're going into a, a, a new life as we go forward. Just say it's a beautiful day one more time. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, um, you're also, I, I know you've lost your son, stepson, I'm very sorry. That this year is, is very uh, instrumental. It's, it's a big part of this healing as well, uh, of moving on and providing the closure. But where things are heading with your career platform, and it's, it's, it's more of a transmutation energy, okay? It's like shedding, it's a snake shedding its old skin for new skin. Um, you're probably just from the way this energy talks, uh, things are heading towards YouTube more and video, but also we're, it's like we're leaving uh, Virginia, DC, Maryland. It's like, we need to go out West. We need to go out to the Midwest. We need to hit South, North. It's just various directions. That's where things are heading and stuff like that. And as you move forward, you can expect a relationship with a, you know, with a partner because that energy is popping up. See, as, see, as, there's, as I start talking, more information starts coming through. Um, yeah. And this is just from the numbers. This is just from numbers and stuff like that. Before you know it, I'll get someone who'll start talking to me and say, hey, by the way, I'm her or this person, that person, you know what I mean? And just, it just, it just doesn't stop, you know what I mean? So. That is so cool. That is so cool. Do you uh, teach numerology? I do. Um, and that's something that uh, I want to talk about as well. Uh, so with Uma, we are doing a mediumship, psychic mediumship mentorship program. We are announcing it on, uh, we have a chat uh, discussion on Saturday. I don't know what day is it. It's May 29th at 7 p.m. And we are, numerology is, is one portion of the tools, but we're going to go over um, the 101 of psychic mediumship and go into various advanced subjects on topics of mediumship. And basically what I can, what I'm demonstrating now, you should be able to do as well with time and training as well. So, and I'll put the link up there as well, but yeah, the numbers talk uh, and I do teach numerology. So once we kind of get past this whole COVID thing, expect to see me at a place near you as well to teach you how it works because it's very fascinating. Just, just based on your numbers, you, you're, you're going into a nine energy or you're actually, you're in a nine which is karmic, which is also time of letting go. It's healing energy. It's preparing for a new future, starting one energy on your birthday. And then after that relationship comes, and then also, you know, there's, there's, there's shedding of old skin that will prepare for a new skin as you move forward. Very interesting. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have a few questions for us. Sure, uh, sure. One uh, for both of us. What are the favorite classes we've ever taken? With with me, probably favorite classes. Um, I'd say probably psychometry, uh, learning to pick up the energy of objects. I love that. Uh, numerology, as I just demonstrated, why. Um, and then probably as well, just the. Uh, uh, exploring you know mediumship uh you know different classes of mediumship the clairvoyance the clairaudience clairsentience um uh, these kind of things and just uh, but yeah but psychometry numerology and definitely uh anything that has to do with mediumship is my thing um like for example i'm not into uh i'm not big into like um I'm trying to think of stuff uh maybe physical mediumship is not really my thing uh too much or um uh, but yeah, just anything that has to do with mediumship or psychic abilities, but uh, psych psychometry and numerology are big on there too. Hmm. Yeah, and for me, um, actually my favorite is when I go spend time with some sort of indigenous teacher in the middle of nowhere and just, I'm off grid for a few weeks away from phone or internet, just being, one with nature and one with a profound teacher that what gets me is the amount of times I go to someone who I have no way to contact them in advance. Like maybe I send an email to them. Like most of the time, if I contact them, it's like sideways through someone else that I'm going to be in their area and I'd like to come and meet with them. And I never hear back. Mm -hmm. So I just show up off the beaten trail in the middle of nowhere, like on a mountain or whatever. And this person's like, so where have you been? 
I'm like, well, I didn't tell you when I was coming. So, and they're like, no, no, no. I'm the one who called to you. You reached out to me because I called to you. Now, come on, we have a lot of work to do. Or it's always like, so like their realm of existence is so beyond ours. It is like amazing to spend a few days or a few weeks living on the edge of their world. Right, right. Yeah. That's why I keep disappearing and into the wilderness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and here's one, Bonet and Carlos, in general terms, could you explain why someone, oops, uh, uh, why someone, since he, she is a child, believes in reincarnation um, as soon as they find a book about it or why they feel the presence of souls? Um, so why are some people very open automatically? We know this is the truth. Our souls let us know the truth. The truth is the truth and right. will resonate with it. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's, it's, I think it's a very natural process for our souls to talk through us. Because remember this body, this physical shell uh, vehicle is temporary. It's housing the soul. And that soul, what it knows, will convey. So if, if it's inclined towards reincarnation or a previous life, it'll come through, regardless of who the physical body is. It, remember, it's the soul, it's the essence that's there. It's really the thing that has our history and has our future and, our, and, and, the, and the present moment all at once. So I'm a big believer in reincarnation. I, I firmly believe it. Um, I also believe that all our lives are occurring uh, future, past, present, all, all are happening at the same time. Yeah. Well, I had better believe in reincarnation since I'm always talking with people's past lives. So <laughs> that would be uh, an issue if I weren't. Let's see. And um, I think we're there. Oh, oh, hi, Uma. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Uma. Um, yeah, so I think that's what we have for questions right now. So first of all, Carlos, I want to thank you so much for that reading. Uh, you were beginning giveaway information that I have not yet released to the public. So that's why I kind of pulled us back a little bit. I'm like, no, wait, oh. wait, wait. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's how we know that you're picking up on the real information because these are things I haven't told anyone yet and you're like handing it to me on a platter so. oh, right, right. <laughs> yeah uh, sometimes my antenna gets ahead of itself well yeah i mean i'm not supposed to be hiding things from people i'm just not ready yet to share some things on the on the big public platform but um when I did some work with uh, Garrett Duncan, who's a featherway shaman in Colorado, he teaches online classes. Um, and before you take his online class, he sends you an attunement video. And the attunement video has a lot of numbers repeating, a lot of numbers. Um, and I've always wondered, like, why are we listening to numbers and how is it so effective? Mm -hmm. and, you, you're, um, you are bringing some information to light that numbers are a way then of connecting with light beings, all frequencies, dimensions. Like, how do you feel this pull, this connection? Well, like I said earlier, like numbers are the formula to all energy. Um, it's, it's all interconnected with the universe. The, the universe is vibrating through numbers. So the universe is vibrating through numbers. That means your life is vibrating through numbers. So if I, if just everything is going through numbers, so if I know your birthday or if I, if I know the year you're born, that tells me a lot about you. I, I can, I can pick up on little, you know, subtle things that, you know, is, is naked, is not uh, privy to our, to our, uh, you know, to a typical conversation with someone or knowing someone. So even like with someone like I know very well, such as my mother, uh, I believe she's in a five energy once I calculate her energy out. So she's in a year of changes, which makes sense because my mother is about to retire. 
so mm -hmm. she's soon to retire so this it would make sense um but yeah it, it I, numbers tell you more than meets the eye and that's what i love about it and it's the free it's one of, it's one of the frequencies that radiates in this universe very strongly um, that is amazing um when you were doing mediumship readings does your work in numerology ever intersect with that what was that again Renee? i'm sorry when you were doing mediumship readings mm -hmm. um does your work with numerology ever intersect with that oh absolutely um that's how i start every reading uh like i say let me get your full name and you say your full name i raise that vibration with your name i have you say it's a beautiful day raise that vibration more i go in with numbers get your birthday and i go with numbers that tells me psychically what's going on around you what is happening around you from there uh, that's kind of like an indicator, a primer for my guides to start bringing you through your loved ones, um, to start checking them in. And for, from there, I start going in with the loved ones. And then from there, I start going through what the messages they have for you or for other people in your life. And, you know, and then we go about the reading from there. And then we tie up the knot and then we close the, close the, the connection as well. Um, it's a process. And yes, the numbers are very, it, the numbers are the gateway to open up the, the door for me. But like I said, every medium's different. So this, you know, not everybody does it that way. It's, it's, there's no it's, there's no correct way to do it. Um, the only incorrect way is when you're coming from a, not a good place in your heart um, where it's an immoral. Oh. But, uh, but yes, <laughs> yeah. numbers. Oh my God, <laughs> that gave me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, this technique that you use for opening, was this one that was taught to you or did you put things together and build your own style? Um, that is something that's very uh, unique to the UMC mediumship. Um, and by unique, that is, uh, I don't know if the spiritual churches do it, but at the United Metaphysical Churches, um, where I've trained under, um, we start out with numerology to, like I said earlier, to open up that door, to feel the energy and know what's going on around that person psychically. And then we lift, we raise that vibration to, to the higher vibration of spirit. And then we connect from there. But yeah, that is something that Reed Brown does, Justin Terry does, Mike Perry does, myself. I'm sure the other um, greats of UMC like Gladys and um, Sandy Tadora. A lot of them did as well. Uh, it just, it makes, you got, you got, people need to understand like mediumship is not very easy. It's actually very hard. It's, it's a very complex uh, science and it's not even a science because you can't break it down. But what I can tell you is the more, the easier you make it on yourself, the easier the work can be as complex as it sounds because it doesn't make sense. I'll be honest with you. Mediumship was not designed to make sense because it's, it, it, it's, it's at a higher vibration and all of this stuff is coming to you and you have to kind of make sense of what's coming to you even though it doesn't make sense. The more you, the more, the, the less you try to figure it out, the better the medium you are, seriously. So don't try to analyze and be like, okay, well, this person is standing in front of me. Uh, she, you know, she's of a Caucasian background. So there's no way that she would have an Asian relative. You don't know that. That could have been an adopted, you know, stepbrother or whatever. So you, you, you just got to go with what you get and just, just deliver. And that's what makes me very hard because you don't know and you just got to go with it. That's so cool. Calls for trust and faith. Mm -hmm. Like I always say, if it goes in my head, it goes out my mouth. <laughs> I mean, like there's no other way. So Cheryl has a question. Sure. Have there have been modalities that you thought were complete BS until you learned more or had an experience. Um, you want me to answer first? Well, I mean, for me, I don't think of modalities as complete BS. I feel every, everything has an audience. I do agree. And maybe mm -hmm. I'm not the right audience. Right, right. Um, I guess uh, I'll say this, when I first started like too long ago, um, I when I got into like the Native American cards or the tar tarot, 
just and like this is like my first like six months a year to just get into this stuff I never looked into like tarot I never really thought it was something I would resonate with and I just I didn't look at it as bs but I was just kind of like they're a bunch of cards with you know different things on there whatever and then like I had a friend who was very good at tarot she taught me a little bit of it and like I said same with me with the Native American cards the tarot cards started speaking to me I wasn't just looking at you know I don't even know the names of anymore the the what is it uh, the emperor or the empress or and you know the fool you know before I knew it those cards were saying more to me about that person without looking at the cards anymore and then I just started saying like wow there's more to this than meets the eye and I found it very fascinating um I got away from cards because you know with the mediumship um, a lot has to do with uh, energy that's present and you have to dial up that frequency but uh I, I still find it kind of fascinating what people can do with tarot and angel cards and any other type of uh, you know uh deck or so or tools yeah i mean what, the one thing to remember is tools are really supposed to help open the reader up you know it's not that the answer is in the tool you use the tool to get the answer into you and you kind of do that without the tools. Yes and no, because I still do use uh, numer numerology and that's a tool, yeah. that's a tool and it opens up the person but also opens up that energy, that other world for spirit for me. So, and it, it's just effective. Like using voice, uh, I use a lot of voice with people, people to say it's a beautiful day, you say the first name, you say the last name, that's opening up that door. That's another tool that I use, so. But there's other ones that are more advanced and like i said we're going to cover that in um the mediumship mentorship program i'm doing with uma um this coming july through december just various tools the things that you know a lot of times like it, you look and you read books i've read a lot of books on mediumship and psychic work they don't they don't really go over in depth on how mediumship works they kind of give you like a a plain explanation in a sense um i know there's some advanced books out there but it's still it's hard to um conceptualize in real time in real person how it works because when when i'm connecting with a client you, if i really get into the mind frame there's nothing here there's nothing here but if i really get into the mind frame oh, there's a bunch of energy here there's a bunch of energy here and you got to learn how to dial into those subtleties and that's what's complex about the work so you need tools and that's something that Uma and I are going to cover during our during our uh, mediumship mentorship program is tools and mediumship and just breaking the mediumship down and be, right. make, teaching you baby style how all this works. And so you can do what we can do and others can do as well without having to, you know, read 10,000 books and meditate for 10,000 hours and then spend 10 years like I did to try to figure it out. And then finally, it's like it finally comes out. It's like, oh, great. Finally figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> actually the the time i was in the circle that you brought through my grandparents and my uncle uh when i mentioned it to you i think last week when we were talking uh -huh. preparing for this you you said oh well yeah but you know because i was amazed with how quick you were just a few minutes per person in the circle and each person had a powerful you know uh connection come through and you said, oh yeah, but you did the billet. Right. And on the billet, I had my name, my birth date, the names of the people I wanted to connect to. And I forget what, maybe a question. And then I held the billet. I don't, you held the billet in your hands. Right. Um, so that was bringing my, my family's energy through me to the billet, through the billet to you. You never opened the billet. Mm -mm. No. Um, what I was doing basically is, so uh, how it works is basically your intention to what you're thinking, what you're writing on the paper is manifesting, right? From that point, you're folding it, right? You're handing me the paper. So intention and energy are manifested on that piece of paper. Energy is alive. So I hold on to that energy using my own energy. I raise some of that vibration using your voice. And from there, the piece of paper talks to me not literally has a conversation with me, but I feel on those subtle, subtle imprinted energy that you've admitted on, uh, have, you've been printed on there. And I just go with, with the flow with what comes through. There's no science to it. I just go with the flow. I pick up clairsentiently, clairvoyantly, clairaudiently. And that's something we're also gonna cover during the mediumship mentorship program, how to connect to these little 
subtle imprinted energies that can be on objects and all these other things like that. But just curious, because I don't remember, and I usually don't remember anymore with clients for the most part, 99% of the time, I forget everything from clients. Because I just, right. you can't keep up with so many people after you do so many of these readings, uh, especially if you don't know the people very well, you know, but what, did, what, did, what came through that day? Because I don't remember yeah. anything from it. Yeah, and there's no reason you would, because if it's not, like when I do readings, if it's not my information, there's no reason for me to remember it. I'm just the, the conduit. Um, no, I had asked to speak with my grandparents and you brought through my grandparents. And then you mentioned that my uncle was there and that he was there with my grandfather and they were very amicable. And um, I recorded it on my phone and later played it for my family is my my uncle and my grandfather did not have the best relationship when my grandfather passed. Um, and it was nice to know that they were together harmonious at this time. It, yeah, and, and you just said a few, and I really don't remember off the top of my head, but there were just a few things, like with my uncle, you brought through that he was a mechanic, like you had the smell of it and, you know, the, oh, the coveralls, like, you know, you nailed the details perfectly. You totally knew that my grandparents had a farm um, and that they were very artistic. Like you had all of that. That they, and um, But it was really special that my grandfather and my uncle are harmonious and they're working together now and they, they, they're in perfect rapport. And, right. um, but yeah, it, that was very impressive that you got that from holding a piece of paper. And so knowing that the lines of energy were coming through and you were able to sort all of that out and let it come through in a cohesive statement in literally like five minutes of time was very impressive. Oh, thank you, thank you. And uh, that's that's just many years of work uh, and practice. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, uh, to all the aspiring psychics and mediums and intuitives out there and healers, you're gonna fall on your face time after time, but it's learning to get back up and showing your face time after time that gets, allows you to be able to do things like that. You know what I mean? Because I remember when I first started with psychometry and actually it was when I was in Oklahoma working at a show, um, I was I was holding on to the paper, but I thought I wasn't seeing anything or hearing or feeling anything. Before you knew it, I was just like, I just went with what I was getting as crazy as it sounded. And it allowed me to connect. And I, it, well, it didn't allow me to connect. The connection was always there. I just trusted it. And before I know it, it was, it was very cohesive in terms of the fluidity of the energy. That's great. Now we have a couple of questions. Yes. Uh, Sandra wants to know, how would you rate animal communication and mediumship uh, with regards of when you communicate with an animal versus communicating with uh, the soul of someone who passed? Um, and I would take it even further and say I'm communicating with maybe uh, an ascended master or light being uh, or an animal totem even. Energy is energy. Okay, <laughs> that, that, is, that is something that's probably... Uh, if you can understand that energy is energy and spirit is energy, you've solved half of the equation of how spirit works, how mediumship works. That is the biggest like um, part of the equation that most people can't figure out is how mediumship works because you you really essentially dealing with energy. So if you know how to raise that vibration, how to connect and stay attuned to that vibration um, beyond the limitations that we have physically, then, then you can then you know how spirit ticks, how that frequency ticks and connects. But okay, to answer that question, so loved ones they're vibrating at a certain frequency. Animals, uh, pets, cats, birds, horses, etc. A lion, I don't care. They're vibrating at, at, at a frequency as well. Uh, so when we're connecting, it's coming through from the guides. But what the guides are doing is basically they're feeding us this information. They're feeding us that the, the, there's a there's a there's a grandfather energy here that would have passed from the heart that would have worn overalls, and he was a painter that's coming through. They're they're feeding us that there's a cat that's coming through that likes to likes to play with catnip all day and jumps around the house like you know like a rambunctious cat. And maybe the cat's name is starts with a K or something like Kelly or Katie or something like that. I don't know. You just go with the flow. And then how do you connect with those ascended masters? That's a very high vibrational frequency. So, to, so as a medium, I'll be really honest with you. 
I don't connect with Ascended Masters during readings because I'm more connected more with uh, Earthbound, or not Earthbound, but, you know, spirits, uh, loved ones and pets as, as well. Um, but I would put the animal communication uh, from a mediumistic level, it's coming through from that same frequency. But also when you're communicating with animals and pets that are alive, it's coming more from a psychic level because the, the, the cat, the dog, the horse, et cetera, is emitting a vibration from their own auric field and we're picking that up. Okay, so, um, but yeah, but yeah, actually what's funny about the whole animal thing, uh, Rob Pritchard and I from the Healing Frequency, we're doing animal communication now. And it's, I never really thought of getting into it. Uma like had this crazy idea, you guys should do it. And we did it, it's been like a great success to do it. And like, that's something we're gonna start tapping into more in the market as well with um, connecting with animals and stuff like that and provide that service to people because, you know, there's, there's plenty of people that really would love to hear from the animals as well and see what really their pets are thinking or, or feeling. Yeah. yeah. When I, um, and everything you just said, that's, I, I agree. When I work with students, one of the first things I do is uh, we sit in the room and we all can find out what everyone's natural connection is. Like, for me, my natural connection is go to uh, the Akashic Library. If I connect with someone who passed on an evidential mediumship level, it's really only information about soul contracts and life path and, you know, eternal connections, past life connections, details about like where to find the diamond ring that disappeared, that will never come through for me because I'm not comfortable getting into the frequency you have to, to find that information. Um, I'm very comfortable with the animal communication, but again, more on a higher realm. When I work with rescue animals, they don't show me what their life was like before they ended up in rescue. But I do know about their soul contracts and we, you know, we, we talk together a lot. So it, it's important to honor, like, Carlos and I could talk with the same spirits and come away with completely different conversations because of the frequencies that we connect with them on. And it, it's so it's important when you go forward with your work, any of you all, that you honor your natural connection, but also always grow and expand it. Always. Mm -hmm. That's where the continuing studies come. And that's why it's so hard. You know, if all I ever did was talk with the librarians, the Akashic librarians, it would be easy. But we have to always grow and expand. Right, and, right. I agree. And can I answer Lori's question real quick? Yeah, that's a great question. So what happens is, um, Lori, is basically if you're having, you know, trouble connecting with a certain person or, you know, for a client, et cetera. What happens is, so mediumship is 50-50 energy. 50% is in uh, spirit's court. The other 50% is in that person's court, the client's court, okay? Think of a basketball field, basketball court. 50% one end, one end, the other 50% the other end. And if that person is not open, if they are cynical, if they're very negative, or they're in a place of fear, et cetera, or they're desperate, you're gonna, you're gonna, you, it can be very difficult to connect with that energy, that frequency, okay? So it, it's, even the best of medium sometimes have trouble. I, I have it sometimes with certain clients. I'm just like, I don't, you know I mean? I'm, I'm pulling teeth to get little bits and pieces when it should be very fluid, like a, a river flowing. So it's not you, it's, but you don't want to be like, it's you, but you know what I mean? It's the energy's not there. It's not present at that moment, at that moment. And maybe it's not time as well. Um, and you got to think as well that spirit uses the path of least resistance. And that's something we're covering in that mentorship program. Um, it's first going to go to uh, the easiest uh, point to connect with that frequency for you. So they're probably going to go with feelings. If the person's really uh, closed, they're probably going to go straight core sentience because they're like, we're not, it's, this is going to be a battle to get through with this person. So they're going to go all feelings. So I uh, think solar plexus, sacral area, um, feeling, feeling, what do I feel with this person? What am I feeling with their loved ones? Okay, is it a father? Is it a, is it a happy father? Is he a grumpy father? Uh, is, is the father sick? You know, what am I getting with this person? Is he like uh, bed? Is he stuck in bed? Okay. Um, what, what feelings am I getting? That's what that's what's going on here. So, and also the other thing is just because uh, your loved ones cross over, 
does not mean that they all of a sudden can communicate at you know like uh you know what i mean they're not enlightened where they're like oh i'm gandhi or i'm jesus and i can you know traverse the whole universe and just let it all out no they still have to um they still have to learn or they still have to communicate with us so i have some loved ones that are clear as day and then some it's like pulling teeth from them it's like they just give me little inkling of information and that's all they give me that's all they give me. Remember, it's not about uh, validating the. Remember, it's not, and I get this. I get in trouble for doing this myself. It's not about um, showing that you can communicate with the loved one. It's about bringing through the message. The message is the key. That is what spirits here for. They're supposed to deliver the message. They're not here to so you can impress someone. And be like, by the way, I got all this information from that loved one. Da, 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 da. No, they're here to deliver a message. Okay, so be the mailman and deliver the message. <laughs> And also, uh, when I'm working with a, a human client, if I find they got a lot of walls and blocks around them, I will yeah. tell them, um, you know, there's a lot of resistance. Could you please give me permission to read for you? And I just want to, uh, if you could please talk to your body and say, thank your body for all the wonderful protection it gives you. But maybe at this moment, would like to be receptive and see what happens. You know, we're right. very safe. Like always do it in very positive ways. Most people don't realize they're protective. Like when Carlos was doing the numerology reading, if you go back and watch the video, you'll see me going, oh, great, great, great. And then suddenly my walls went up because suddenly he was going into information that I wasn't ready to confirm for him and put it out there in public yet. And you can see it on my energy before you even see it on my body or my face before you even see it in my saying, oh, that's great, let's talk about something else. So that that's a great example of- <laughs> I felt that by the way, as I was connecting, I was like, oh, okay, let me just keep going. <laughs> Cause I could, I could feel like somewhat of a snag as I was going through that flow. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so guys, we are hitting towards the end of our time. I want to make sure Carlos has a chance to uh, tell us again about like where you are these days, what you're doing, what people can get from you. How can people access your, uh, your special price readings that you're offering right now? Yeah, so um, due to the current uh, COVID uh, situation and, you know, understand that uh, everyone was not, you know, uh, you know, there's some people are struggling and, you know, it's uh, it's a difficult time for our country. Um, so I'm offering just a special, uh, just for the summer. Uh, what I'm offering is a reduced uh, rate for my reading. So just uh, for $40, uh, it's like $42 or something for a 15 minute reading, just a quick mini reading. It's, the, it's basically the festival or expo rate that I offer. And then as well, I'm offering for like $82 or so for the 30 minute reading. Um, and typically those 30 minute readings are $100 on my website, but I'm, I'm, I'm taking $20 off um, for that. So what they can do is I'll write it on there. You can email me at carlosthemedium.com and I will send you the link. Um, I'm sorry, you can email me at carlosthemedium at gmail.com. Sorry, I gave you my website. Uh, right. I need to connect to spirit. They're more accurate in my own mind. Um, but um, you can email me at Carlos the medium at Gmail, and I'll I'll give you the special link for for that uh, discounted rate. But you can also check out my website and contact me on there and just be like, I listened to Bonita Woods is uh you know and with you on live, and I heard that there was an there's a special rate, and I'll and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll honor that as well. And I'll just put my email on here as well. So, but yeah, and uh, like I said, we're doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, with you know different uh you know uh spiritual workers in our community with uma and rob pritchard uh like you said this this weekend this uh, we have the summit i posted the link on the chat so people can connect there for this sunday it starts at noon and guess what it's free no dinero no cost no mula nothing just gratis okay so that's free and then um like i said we have uh, the vibrational um uh summit as well right raising the love yeah. on may 17th I think mm, Sunday. It's a Sunday. It is. 
Uh-huh. And I believe it's, uh, it's don't quote me on that. $44, I think, yep. for an all-day summit on Sunday Ab the 17th. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'll post that link for that in a minute. But yeah, it's uh, a lot of good stuff out there and stuff like that. And I'm going to post my email here real quick. But you can email me and I will honor that, uh, that special rate that I was offering about. And uh, a lot of good things coming as well. And don't, feel free to add me on Facebook. Just search Carlos Medium and you can add me. And uh, like I said, it's um, we're also doing the Mediumship Mentorship Program. And uh, that, that is something that kicks off in July. We have our uh, discussion May 29th. And that's a big thing. So anybody that's really interested about learning mediumship and how it really works, and you want to do this professionally, I suggest you, 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 you listen to what we have to say at the discussion and, and take heavy interest into, possibly, into uh, signing up because it's, it's a chance of a lifetime. I mean, uh, who knows where Um and I will be down five years down the road where we're, we may not offer here locally. So it's something to take, take uh, you know, take, invest on for your for your own for your own self for your own learning so for yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i actually yeah uma could you um put the link to your and carlos's mentorship program because i looked at it on uma's website and i was amazed at what you guys have to offer and the really reasonable pricing for it mm -hmm. it's like so much more financially reasonable than the equivalent that i've seen anywhere else um, and let me yeah, right. And let me add to that, Bonita, because what a lot of people don't, don't realize is that how much time and energy and even money goes into developing. You're talking about eight, nine years of work, right? Uh, spending a good part of a year in Roanoke training um, and then going to attend workshops for years. Uh, I know Uma went to Arthur Finley for four times, I think. And then she's been to New Jersey and working with Mavis and other teachers. Um, it's just a lot of time and energy to get to do this. Um, if I wish I had, a when I was starting, I wish I had some local program where I could have been mentored and then picked up a lot of things from them in a short period of time. It took me eight years. And like you said, I, 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 I from there, I finally came out of the closet and said, hey, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, please join us for that. It's, it's going to be a great uh, mentorship program. And you're training with, with some of the most bona fide, two of the most bona fide mediums in the community. So, mm -hmm. oh, Well, thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us. And oh, this, I, I feel like I learned a lot tonight so i'm i'm extra happy um and it was wonderful sharing this time with everyone uh so you guys if you're not already facebook friends with carlos friend him tonight and i hope we'll see you this sunday on all of our facebook pages um for live streaming and you know invite your mama friends you know, to celebrate Mother's Day with a, a you know, a symposium on self-care on all levels. Uh, oh, well, thank you, Lori. That's a nice compliment. Um, thank you all. Thank you. And um, have a wonderful night. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.